Here we'll look at an example user-defined function m file called waveplot that illustrates some ways that we can use some of the tools MATLAB offers to write a more general use function. So the first thing we'll see is in our function command, we see the variable varargin. Varargin is short for variable arguments in, and it's a special MATLAB name it's reserved for this use. And it allows this function to accept a variable number of input arguments, which in this case we're going to use to pass parameters along with a function. The other thing we'll note, though it's not clear in the function statement itself, but it will become clear below, is that the input trig fun to this function is actually a function itself. Basically what this function does is it plots the input trig function over the input time vector and counts the number of periods that are plotted. Trig fun is defined elsewhere as a function and this function m file is written to accept that function in four forms where it's a function of t and omega for frequency, a function of t omega and a for time, frequency, and amplitude, a function of t omega and phi or time, frequency, and phase shift or a function of t omega a and phi in our most general case. We can, uh, when we write a function like this, one thing we do want to do is have some error checking with our inputs to make sure we're getting what we expect. So this is another special MATLAB variable nargin, which stands for number of arguments in, and here we're checking that we have at least three arguments in. And the three arguments that we're hoping that we have are trig fun, the function we're going to be evaluating, the time vector, and the frequency. You'll see in all three, four cases we have the frequency as the second variable. And what's going to happen is when we pass the parameters to this function through the varargin MATLAB variable, varargin is going to be an array and the first element of that array is going to be the frequency. So what we're looking for is to make sure we have that frequency. If not, we output an error message. If we do have the frequency, we continue and we're going to assign the first element of var r again to frequency. Notice that we're using curly braces for the index for var r again little different than typical arrays and that again is because this is a special MATLAB variable. Then the script calculates the period and goes on to calculate the number of periods that are going to be plotted in the time vector by finding the overall length of the time vector taking the last element minus the first element. Next we're going to plot the function and here we're just going to call trigfun, which is the function that was passed to waveplot with the input variable time, which is the time vector, which was input to this function, and varr again. Now varr again is going to have a variable number of elements, and that's what this colon allows for. Depending on trigfun, what varr again is going to have is either omega or omega and the amplitude or omega and the phase angle or omega the amplitude and the phase angle. So let's see how this all works. Okay so now we're over in MATLAB and let's check out how this wave plot function works. The goal here again is just to give you an introduction to how to use this function with the hope that then you'll open it up and try it out and try the debugger and try different inputs and learn more about how it works. So first thing we'll do is bring up the help comments that we wrote just to remind us how to call the function and we know that we need to send this another function that it will call trig fun. So the first thing we're going to do is define some function and we'll use a one line anonymous function. MATLAB for simple mathematical functions can let us define that user defined function 
in the command window or in another script with one line. And the syntax would be something like fun1 equals at, and this is where we define the input variable list to this function. So we want t, w, a, and p will be our inputs. And this will just be a, sim a basic um, cosine function. So amplitude times cosine of omega times t plus p, where p is the phase angle. So there's our anonymous function that we defined. And we can go over and look in the workspace. And we see now we have a function in our workspace. Today we've been looking at variables in our workspace. But now we have a function in our workspace. So back to the command window here. And let's call wave plot. So we'll say n equals wave plot. We're just going to assign that number of periods that wave plot calculates to the output variable n. The first input is the function name, so that would be fun1. The second input is the time vector, and I'm just going to dis define that with lin space right here in the function call. So lin space 0, go from 0 to 10, and use the default 100 points. Uh, the next would be the frequency. We'll use pi the amplitude 2 and the phase angle we we'll use pi over 2. Note what's important here for these three variables that are going to pass into that var argin command is that we're maintaining the same order of inputs here as we did when we defined the input list for the function frequency amplitude phase angle or w a and p pi is going to go into w, 2 is going to go in for the amplitude, and pi over 2 is going to go in for p, simply because that's the order they are in the list. So let's try running it. And remember the main function of this was to generate a figure, so let's look at our figure. And there's a, a figure of a cosine plot. We'll see it's out of phase by pi over 2, so it's starting um, by going down at 0 instead of going up at 0. And so let's try another function. So we'll find a second function, fun2. And this one, we'll just use a t and w as our variables, t being our independent variable, w being a parameter. And we'll set this equal to 5 times cosine of w times t plus 10 times sine of 2 times w times t plus pi over 4. Now we have a second anonymous function. We can go over and see what's happening in our workspace. We now have two functions plus the variable n that was output the first time. Let's try this function, sending it to wave plot. And we'll send this to wave plot with the same other commands. However, in this case, we only have two inputs, our independent variable and only one parameter, as opposed to three parameters that we used with fun1. So we need to go back into our function call here, and we'll actually delete the last two parameters. And all we have is pi, which is our frequency and we'll call it with pi. And we see that the input argument a is undefined, so I got an error. And hopefully you caught this. The error here is I didn't change the function name that I called. So I still sent it the old function. And the uh, function was looking for additional variables for a and p, but we only sent it uh, to we only sent it pi. We only sent it the one parameter instead of the three parameters we sent before. So that's what's going on there with that error. So let me try it again, but this time I'll make sure to remember to change fun1 to fun2 and run it. And now let's take a look at our figure. And we can see the effect of adding the sine and the cosine waves of different amplitudes and different frequencies. And that's going to conclude this example. I would encourage you to download this M file run it with the debugger and get a good understanding of what's going on.